Hello, dears, and welcome to Al-Qusayni Virtual Lab Pathology Talks, Tips, and Practical Tips. Today, I'm going to share with you a very interesting, uh, rare brain tumor, the polymorphous low-grade neuroepithelial tumor of the young, which is a relatively recently described entity included in the CNS5 WHO classification of tumors of the central nervous system. So this is a 13-year-old female patient who presented with convulsions, and this is typical presentation, and loss of consciousness was found to have a brain tumor. Actually, the location of the brain tumor was in the right temporal lobe. And as you can see uh, from the low power mag magnification, loads and loads of calcification, typical of this entity or of this tumor. In addition, there are areas that look like low grade glioma on high power magnification. Uh, honestly, this uh, looks very much like low grade fibrillary astrocytoma, as if it is an astrocytic tumor. There is a single mitotic figure here, and the appearance of the tumor cells really looks like astrocytoma. However, in other areas, typical appearance of uh, oligodendroglioma or oligodendroglioma like growth pattern with the fried egg appearance of the tumor cells and the chicken wire vasculature. And this is so typical that I'm suspicious that many of what we used to call actually oligodendroglioma in young individuals were actually entities of, uh, uh, of plenty, uh, which is this uh, tumor um, uh, entity. And um, if this is why most often the 1P19Q in oligodendroglioma, what we used to call oligodendroglioma in the young used to be negative because actually the cases were not oligodendroglioma. So remember, Remember, if you encounter something like oligodendroglioma in a child, you have to think of a plenty as the diagnosis. So how can we confirm our diagnosis? GFAB is usually strongly diffusely positive. OLIC2 also tends to be positive in the nuclei of the tumor cells. The tumor shows some limited infiltration into the adjacent uh, brain tissue. However, centrally within the center of the tumor, there is no evidence of infiltration. So it's like both patterns can be seen. Some limited infiltration and then compact areas with no evidence of infiltration. Chi-67 is usually very low as well. But this is really the clue. This is where the support of the diagnosis comes, which is the CD34, in which the tumor in total shows uh, positivity. Sometimes it can be patchy, but quite often it is diffuse positivity with variable degree of intensity. So in some areas, it's strongly diffusely positive. In others, it can be slightly less positive, but this really is what is needed to support the diagnosis of plenty. So remember, the final diagnosis for this case was polymorphous low-grade neuroepithelial tumor of the young or plenty. This is a CNS WHO grade one tumor that can sometimes be associated with BRAF or FG, uh, FR uh, mutations. And because of that, patient might benefit from targeted treatment. So the tip or the take home message is do not uh, diagnose oligodendroglioma in the young. Think once, once, twice, and three times before rendering the diagnosis because we have other entities that are common in the young and that can show uh, features reminiscent of oligodendroglioma. A plenty is one of those tumors. A clear cell ependymoma is the other a tumor, and DNET definitely should be in the differential diagnosis. So I hope you find this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.